Hello everyone and welcome back to Granite Paradise. It's Sunday, May 28th, 2023. Today we're going to be discussing and looking at ventifacts, which are wind, are wind sculpted, wind shaped rocks, primarily found in dry climates, in places where there really aren't any other erosional forces at play, such as water or tree roots, um, and, and situations where the rocks are disturbed. The rocks need to sit on the surface for a very long time as wind erosion is perhaps one of the slower forces of erosion. Um, you're aware that for example a river flooding can move a lot of rock and make a lot of change in a single season. <laughs> Whereas a Venifact will sit on the ground for 10,000, 20,000, maybe even longer uh, years. So they're usually found in places where very arid, uh, windy, there needs to be some, some sand, but not too much sand uh, available to actually do the, the sculpting of the rocks. Most of the specimens I have are from South Central Wyoming where they're very abundant because it's high desert there it's very dry climate very windy any of you uh, familiar with Wyoming will know what I'm talking about if it's not windy it's probably February 30th or something <laughs> anyway I have several specimens here um, a key identifying feature in a benefact is facets and ridges Often, looking at them from above, they look like land features. They look like mountain ridges, as you would imagine, or even sand dunes. This one here that I'm showing you, to me, looks like a sand dune. It has this nice crisp ridge along the top. Those of you who are more into venifacts might be able to tell me what type this is. Not the type of rock, but the type of venifact. They're actually classified by how many facets and how many ridges they have. The most common being three facets and three ridges. This one, it's actually, I mean, here's a little bit of a ridge here, more of a sloping effect on, on these sides here. Yet I, lo I love this ridge here. It looks just like a sand dune. And then if, it's too big for me to move with one hand, but if you were to turn this over, as is common with benefacts, they're usually sitting on one side. And so the, the bottom side is still in whatever condition it was in before the wind started acting on it. For example, this specimen here. I showed this in, in the video I did about the banded iron formation. Those of you who watched that video will recognize this. Beautifully fluted, beautifully almost polished to a high shine. Banded iron. You can turn it over. It's got some water on it because it just rained last night. But on the back side, it's just a rough, uh, unweathered surface. So, which implies it was sitting on the hillside for quite a while. <laughs> and not even going to take a guess as to how long, but I picked up a rock one time and tried blowing on it, and I got myself all out of breath and it made no effect. So, long story short, wind takes a long time. Another feature you'll see in Venifax, occasionally, the rocks do move, and the reading I did I, uh, they'll be polished all the way around. Uh, the reading I did suggests that the wind etches away at one side for so long until it changes the mass, the center of mass of the stone, and the stone basically rolls over. It shifts a little bit, and, and then shifts a little more, and then shifts a little more. I think that's a big part of it. Um, another contributing factor is, you know, there are animals around. And there is some vegetation. I mean, even a sagebrush bush growing next to a rock will turn it over occasionally. So some of the stones, although they seem to be quite rare, do get flipped over and are polished all the way around. This is another nice, nice example. Uh, you can see all the ridges fluting. We call that where it looks like it's scooped out. Sometimes you'll also find venifacts where, for example, this one here, nice crisp ridges on the top, ridges and facets, and you turn it over, and it's a river cobble. 
This one I happened to have collected in a place where there were ancient river gravels up on a hillside that had been in the wind. And so they were benefacts on one side and you flip them over in their river gravel. Another interesting thing about benefacts is that depending on the kind of stone and the features of the particular type of stone, they'll erode out differently. So this one, if you look at it from far away, it has its ridges and facets, and yet it's got these holes all over it. This, this particular piece is from near Barstow, California, out in the Mojave Desert. I think about 50 miles east from there is where we were. And long story short is this basalt has vesicles in it, little, little air bubbles. And of course the wind can grab each one of those air bubbles and enlarge it because the sand, gra sand grains will get stuck inside them and swirl around and you can imagine. So, so each air bubble gets huge until they all run into each other as you're seeing here. It's not that the rock is full of giant holes. The holes are actually tiny. If I were to break this rock in half, it's solid. It has a few little holes in it. But if you can imagine a snowy field or your lawn in the winter and you walk across it, and then the sun has a few days to act on your footsteps, eventually it looks like King Kong walked across your lawn. Or the, look at the park, you know, where lots of kids were running around. Those footsteps all grow into each other uh, after a few days. So that's basically what's going on here. In a granular type of stone, this specimen here is from near Farthing, Wyoming. There used to be a mine there where they were mining magnetite. I guess back in the early 1900s, if I remember correctly. I did a video about the place and filmed it there, and I'll put a link to it in the subscription. But it's beautiful Venifax of, of magnetite. And magnetite is somewhat crystalline, so the wind would act on each crystal, and you get this type of a pattern, we call it fluting. I'll try to zoom in here. Not sure how clear that'll come out. But if you can imagine, I like to compare it to a bowl of ice cream, and you take your little teaspoon, a small spoon, and just keep scooping out, and eventually you have that kind of a pattern. It looks like somebody just scooped this rock out. I won't pick this one up either because it's heavy, but it's also rough on the backside. Just a completely broken piece that was sitting on the ground. Then sometimes what happens is a rock, not necessarily holes or crystals, but it has different hardness um, particles in it. This is a basalt. Um, I call it volcanic breccia. I'm sure it has a more professional name. <laughs> Indignum bright or something like that. Uh, I always forget how to pronounce that name. Um, but so that's a benefact. You can see the background in this, the matrix is hard and the chunks that are in it are soft. And yet you feel it, it's very rough, but at the same time polished. It's a really nice feel. That also is from the Mojave Desert. And when the conditions are just right, and I think this is very rare, I only know of two situations in the world where um, this has happened. I'm sure there are more, but if you know of any, please let me know. And that's where, mm, be it the size of the sand particles compared to the hardness and, and substance of the rock being polished, you'll get a glass perfect polish as if it were thrown in a rock tumbler. The difference being you feel the rock and it still has its pits and textures and yet every pit, every little hole is polished on the inside. I'm not sure if you can see that shine in the video or not. I hope it shows up, but it's, it's a glassy shine. This one's maybe even clearer. I'm not sure my camera is focusing. <laughs> See if I move from side to side, you can see the reflections. These are from a hillside in the Shirley Basin area of Wyoming. And if you go out there and look, you probably won't find it because it's an area that's about 20 feet by 20 feet on, the, on just one hillside. And there are these polished rocks. You walk 20 feet away and there aren't any. And not sure why. Um, a little bit of research I've done says that there might be diamonds in the dust around there, like microscopic diamond dust. 
which is able to polish this particular rock as a jasper, so it's really hard and takes a good shine. It's the kind of stone you'd want to throw in your rock tumbler for the same reason. It's just really, really neat to see these um, where the insides of pockets and cavities are polished. Very nice. There's a video I'll, that I did years ago. I apologize in advance for the quality of that video because it, it was done, geez, I must have did that maybe five or ten years ago. And it's, it, it's at the place where these are from. And anyway, there's a big boulder there that has druzy quartz cavities all over it, little agate cavities, and the cavities are polished on the inside. Anyway, um, I could go on. I forgot to mention this one. This is just another one where depending on the stone, the textures affect how it erodes. So again, this has the facets, the facets and ridges, but it also has because this rock had areas that were harder and softer the wind eroded it differently that's also from the mojave desert anyway thank you for joining i i hope this was uh informative and interesting to you please like share and subscribe and come by and visit sometime